Columbus Prep Step. And today we will be tackling 2019 AMC 10B number 24, which is the same thing as 2019 AMC 12B number 22. And the problem statement is, we find a sequence recursively by x sub 0 equals 5 and x sub n plus 1 equals quantity x sub n squared plus 5xn plus 4 divided by quantity x sub n plus 6 for all negative non-negative integers n. Let m be the least positive integer such that x sub m is less than or equal to 4 plus 1 over 2 to the 20. In which of the following intervals does m lie? So this is how we'd solve the problem. First, uh, we can start off by just writing out the important information, which is pretty much just the four given uh, the three given expressions to us in this problem. And from here, I see that the x sub m is less than or equal to 4 plus 1 over 2 to the power of 20 seems kind of annoying. Like, the most annoying part is the 4. So I want to make a substitution to get rid of that 4. We're going to say x sub m equals y sub m plus 4. Or you can say x sub n. It doesn't make a difference. And what this means tells us, what this tells us is now we're not trying to find an m value such that y sub m is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the power of 20. Obviously, this doesn't make anything more obvious, but it will, it just makes the expression look so much nicer and it will actually help us solve it down the road. Now, first, I want to factor this x sub n part on the top and I can rewrite this as x sub n plus 1 equals x sub n plus 4 times x sub n plus 1 over x sub uh, n plus 6. And now we're going to apply the substitution we had earlier and then we get 5 plus y sub n times 8 plus y sub n divided by y sub n plus 10. Now from here it seems like we don't really know how to proceed but we'll just keep expanding and hopefully something nice happens. So thus we have 40 plus 13 y sub n plus y sub n squared over y sub n plus 10. Now here what we can do is we can rewrite the top to make this nice factoring happen. We can rewrite the top as 40 plus 4n of uh, 4y sub n plus y sub n squared plus 9n all divided by y sub n plus 10. What we see is this 40 plus 4y sub n is nothing more than just 4 times the denominator of y sub n plus 10. So I can rewrite this now to 4 plus y sub n squared plus 9n, uh, n uh, y sub n, 9y sub n, divided by y sub n plus 10. So now we have this. And this 4 doesn't actually make too much of a difference because if we see the answer choices that are given to us, we see that these answer choices are rather fluid or like, or the fact that the interval is so large that this 4 is rather minuscule, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So down the road in our calculations, we're going to ignore this 4 because it doesn't actually make a substantial difference, unlike the expression on the right of the y sub n squared plus y sub n, all divided by y sub n plus 10. And now here I can actually reduce this even further by making another clear uh, recognition here, which is that y sub n squared plus 9 y sub n over y sub n plus 10 can be rewritten as y sub n squared plus 10 y sub n quantity minus y sub n, because 10 minus 1 is 9, divided by y sub n plus 10 can now be rewritten as 1 minus y sub n over y sub n plus 10. Oh, sorry, y sub n. 1 times y sub n. See, now that's pretty handy because this makes things look a lot nicer. And we can rewrite this by factoring y sub n to get y sub n is 1 minus 1 over y sub n plus 10. And now you're probably wondering, well, how in any way is this part actually useful? But now we can make bounding restrictions because as you see, the answer choices are all given in intervals, which means to actually find our relative m value, we're gonna to have to bound this expression here by intervals to see in which interval my answer would actually lie. And here's one thing I, I note. I note that I'm given x sub zero equals five. And every if I just plug in the first two terms, I wanna find the first two or first three terms, I notice that every term is smaller than this starting term x sub zero equals five. And now logically, Let's see what happened for y sub n. And if I, you can also prove this by induction if you want, but in an AMC contest, you're, you don't really have to prove in an AMC 12 or AMC 10. And it doesn't really worth it that much either because you don't have as much time, especially when you get to the end of the test. So at this point, we see through some pattern recognition that every term gets smaller and smaller, which means that we can bound this initial value here. Because if x sub zero equals five, that means if x sub zero equals five, 
then that means that y sub 0 equals 1. So this is the largest it's ever going to be. And let's bound this part right here. We'll bound this part. 1 minus 1 over y sub n plus 10. Because if it's equal to 1, the largest it's ever going to be is 10 over 11. Because I just plug in 1, and 1 minus 1 over 11 equals 10 over 11. And then logically, it's going to get smaller and smaller to the point where y sub n is going to be so small that it's going to be negligible and relatively close to 0. Because that's what's going to happen as every term gets smaller and smaller. Because it's never going to be negative truly, because this expression doesn't allow, this expression doesn't allow for any negative values to happen. So then, if y sub n gets so close to 0, that means the smallest value we can ever have is 9 over 10. Because the y sub n will be 0, and 1 minus 1 over 10 is 9 over 10. But note that this is less than and not less than or equal to, because this value is never truly attainable, because y sub n is never truly ever going to be equal to 0. It will get smaller and smaller, but it will never actually get there. Now, what we can see from here is we can make more bounding arguments. And I can say to a certain value that 9 over 10 to the value of n is less than y sub n is less than or equal to 10 over 11 to the value of n. And here's why. Because we're now assuming that once y is extremely large, this y sub n value right here, well, it's based on this expression right here, actually. I should say that first. It is based on this expression. Because if y sub n is extremely large, or as y sub n grows larger and larger, this expression right here is going to make y sub n closer and closer to 0, which means that what I'm going to have then is that this part right here is very close to 1, essentially. And so I only have to look at this y sub n term right here. And from there, what I can see is I can make a few quick approximations. If n equals 3, then 9 over 10 to the third power, which is this 0.9 cubed, is 0 0.729, right? And here's another, uh, in, in, here's another important thing that we should see, is that 1 over 2 is equal to 0 0.5. And the square root of 0 0.5 is roughly around 0 0.7, because 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 is 0.49. And this is what's really important to recognize, because this then means that 1 over square root 2, which is also 2 to the negative 1 half, is equal to 0 0.75, uh, 0 0.0. It's like 0 0.70-ish, root 2. And here's why this then becomes important, because essentially this number, this 9 over 10 cubed, is going to be greater than 2 to the negative 1 half. So 2 to the negative 1 half is greater than 9 over 10 cubed, which is less than y sub 3, which means I it directly have 2 to the negative 1 half is less than y sub 3. And obviously, we want to find this, for this expression we have in the beginning, we want to look at this. And this is essentially another way of saying 2 to the negative 20th power. So the way I get 2 to the negative 20th power from here is to multiply, raise both sides to the 40th power. If I raise both sides to the 40th power, I'm going to have 2 to the negative 20 is less than y to the uh, y sub 120. Because, you know, y cubed 40 times is 3 times 4, which is 120. And here's why this is important. Because now we've pretty much solved the problem. And there's really no need to actually find a relatively good upper bound. Because what we want to find is we wanted to find some y value such that y something was a y sub m was less than 2 to the negative 20th. But now we know that it's around the ballpark of 120 and give or take 4, obviously, because I said in the beginning we can ignore this 4. So obviously this y m value is going to be less than 120 based on our calculations because we used approximation. We didn't actually exactly solve for it. And so relatively, that shouldn't matter too much because even like the values don't really grow that much faster. And we have a within plus or minus 4 ballpark. So that's why we would have the answer as c, which is 81 to 242. Now, if you actually, like, after the test, if you want to check your answer and you go home and you type up a program or you put in a calculator, what you find is the actual value for m is in the 130s. I think it's 133 or 136 or, or something along those lines. And which means that our approximation of 120 was actually pretty close to the original answer. But we made a lot of assumptions here because this assumption right here, where I assumed that 1 minus uh, 1 over y sub n plus 10 can be treated as negligible, is kind of a major assumption to make. Like, we can obviously assume that if we want to find the exact answer. But since we were given such a wide interval with such a large range of values that we could possibly have, it's okay to make these assumptions in these kind of scenarios. And yeah, that's pretty much how you tackle this problem. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please comment down below which problems you'd like to see next or whatever you'd like to see next in general. And we'll definitely do our best to make a video on it. Thank you.